as for turning on the machine, there's a button here, there's a little box which you just flip up the switch and a little green light comes on. Once that green light's come on, you can turn your monitor on with the little power button here on the right. Once that's on, your blue lights will appear and the screen will take a couple of minutes to, re to boot up. So it brings you up to this log on screen, which you would use just like a computer and you would click. Um, the password here is on your uh, left hand side um, to log on. The password is Java or lowercase. You just press enter. Now once you get onto this screen, you want to open the SL imaging program. That's just right there. This takes a couple of seconds to boot up and once you are at the um, opening screen here you'll want to enter the password for the SL imaging program which is four zeros and you only have to do that um, you know once when you log on you always log on as administrator login and that's your home screen now we'll go on to um, adding patients. So here you can view your whole patient list. We can see that there's been 21 um, patients that have already been captured. You can see the number there on the right. Um, to add a patient, you would go into add, create new patient, and you'll need to fill in their surname, their first name, their gender and date of birth. Their patient ID is already pre-filled for you. So let's just do a nice quick test uh, patient. And here, put their date of birth in. Now the format has to be as follows. Otherwise it won't allow you to uh, create a patient. So once you've done that, you'll go down to the bottom here and press capture and you'll select whichever eye that you're going to be documented. So OD meaning right eye, OS meaning left eye, OU meaning both eyes. So we'll go into both eyes. And there's your starting camera. So you'll be moving your patient, sorry, moving the machine so that you can um, get it right for your patient. You move the table up and down by these buttons here. So we'll move it up a, a little bit for our patient. And then you will be getting your patient to pop their chin on the rest here and make sure their forehead is firmly placed on the top. You want their eye level to be level with this canthus mark here in red and it's on both eyes. You also want to, um, if you want to move the chin rest up and down, you'll be twisting this uh, clockwise to go up and anti-clockwise to go down. Okay. Now, um, in terms of positioning yourself, you would start with your slit um, binoculars to be as close as possible. Then you would be looking in. So I've got glasses, so I'm going to pull them out. You would be looking in to have a look and then adjusting it accordingly to your uh, uh, pupillary distance. And looking here, so you want this to be at a at straight and then this is the arm that you're going to be moving around. Okay, so now going in, you can also view your picture here as well as in the um, binoculars here. Um, some people might find, may find it that it's more useful to use the screen because you get a live image on this screen here because our little camera, which is here, very clever, um, is there taking an image and showing us live. So here we can see Kelly's eye. I'll just bring you down a bit, Kelly, and I'll get you to make sure your head touches the top. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> go. So here we're a bit magged out. So you want to start at the lowest magnification just and then move to the higher magnifications. So here my slit is quite small so I want to change the length of it, move it up with this top button here, or sorry, sorry top knob here 
and then I can also change the width of it with this little knob here like I mentioned before. Now that's a bit bright on Kelly's eyes and so you might want to document that this here is your little diffuser. You can make it a little bit more diffuse or brighter depending on the needs for your patient. Now the diffuser is also, you may also think that it's broken, so just make sure if the diffuser's in place, you're not actually gonna see the light as um, as bright as you would. If, if, you, if you think that that could be the case, just flick it out. Okay, so now we're just gonna look into Kelly's eye and we can see the live image here, it's great. And we're going to take a standard photo. I might just make it less diffuse and put the brightness up a little bit. Sorry, Kelly. We're just going to take a photo here. So brightness knob is here to go down and up. You can see it reflected on there as I'm changing it up and down. And now to take a photo, you can just click the screen or you can also press the space bar on your keyboard. Now you can also capture videos on the slip lamp and that's just this button here on the bottom left to start and stop recording. So I'll start recording and Kelly just give me a few blinks. Yep, yeah, good. And that's recording your image for you. And press again to stop recording. Now once you've taken all your uh, photos and videos that you want to, you'll go into the review screen and press review here on the bottom right. We can sit back. And here you'll be able to see your video. So we had Kelly blinking a little bit and just picturing her eye. And we've also got some images here of her eye. And you want to click and drag and drop. Or you can also double click. And these are the images. So in conclusion, the main things that you need to worry about um, that you might find issues with, number one will be your magnification. You'll want to always start on a lower mag, so your lowest mag here is 10. So always start on that and then move to the higher magnifications. The second thing is your diffuser. Just check if your diffuser is all the way in or if it's out. If it's all the way in, you may not be able to see your image um, that bright. So just make sure to check that if you're not getting a clear image. Um, the other thing is here your brightness knob. So if it's turned all the way down, you're not going to be able to see any light. You may think it's broken. Just make sure that you turn it back up if you're having those problems. The next one is the brake. If the brake is flicked forward, you may just need to check um, because if it's flipped forward, obviously it won't move or it has lots of resistance moving. So just make sure that your brake is flicked back. Just wanted to point out with the joystick um, to move the machine, so to move the slit lamp up and down, you'll be doing clockwise movements to move it up and anti-clockwise anti -clockwise movements to move it down. There we go.